Staples knows that when the leave-behinds for your sales call get left behind at your office, it's time. When you need to print 30 pages and you're 300 miles from the office, it's time. And when the intern packed the Harrington file, not the Farrington file. Ugh, my bad. It's definitely time. And it's times like these when you can count on Staples. Access your files from email, the cloud, or USB, and then print, copy, fax, or scan them. And get back to business fast. Visit your nearby Staples. It's pro time. Blog Talk Radio. everybody to a live edition of the Screen Boy podcast and I will do have to say that is one of the creepiest intros at the beginning of the Spider-Man theme I've ever heard <laughs> but it was amazing I loved it so um, like it once again welcome and uh, right now with me I am Ronnie Adams uh, one of your hosts of the Screen Boy podcast and we have with us one Mr. Jesse Starcher Street level, how we doing? Ah, <laughs> uh, what's up, man? You, you, I listen. Give me five minutes, and uh, usually I just scour the YouTubes for any metal cover <laughs> of anything, and then I toss it up there. So there's your. Uh, I wish I could give credit for that. I'll have to do that later. But that was a uh, that was a pretty good a little metal old school Spider Man. Yeah. Um. So as you can guess, uh. Well, wait a minute. Before we go any further, how are you doing, Jesse? I'm doing good, man. How about yourself? <laughs> I'm doing very well. Doing very well tonight. Um, we had you a little uh, couple of days of technological oh, dude. hell there. <laughs> Gosh. What? It what was something happen? else, man. We had – let's see. Okay, so uh, my wife went on vacation, took the, took the daughter with her down to the beach, and then that was Wednesday. So – yeah. Thursday goes by without a hitch, had a good time, and then Friday comes around, and the storm wages through the uh, the, the valley here and takes down this tree yeah. right down beside the house. And uh, it was across the street, but it landed on a power line. So, Oof. yeah, that was 4 o'clock Friday night. Now, here's the thing, dude. Okay, I'm okay with you know, no electric, all right, well, I'll make the best of it. I'll read a book. Yeah. I've I got boxes of comics to keep myself, you know, keep myself uh, educated with and have a good time and entertained. Uh, but the thing is, is that the three-year-old son and the seven-year-old son are very much dependent upon technology as we know it. YouTube... Yes. YouTube is life apparently around here because when when the electricity went off and the YouTubes and the internets went down, no Netflix. Oh my goodness, I was at uh, let's just say I was I was trying to find things to do, and the thing is is that it landed on the line just enough to where a block down they had electricity. Okay. I think like there was okay. maybe a two block a two block radius did not have electricity, so it just kind of sucked here until 
about 11 o'clock Saturday. Okay, good. Hey, we got electricity back on. I thought the cable was going to be out that much longer. Nope, cable was on. We're ready to go. That was Saturday. We're we're up and running. We're back. We're back in. You know, we're back in the the new age here, folks. And then Monday hits, and hmm. there's a tornado warning 30 miles down uh, the road, uh, and my internet just decides to limit to put the flash they're flowing. Okay, it goes away. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and to which, you know, source material, we were supposed to do a source material that night. Yeah. And I was like, man, I don't cancel shows. I don't like to do it. And I honestly could have done the show via phone. However, remember how I mentioned my mm-hmm. wife was on vacation? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, being the, I, being the good parent that I am, let my kids stay up. At, uh, you know, to uh, not an indecent hour, but like 10 o'clock. Usually they're in bed by 8.30, yeah. at least staying in bed by 8.30. 10 o'clock rolls around, you know, they're still up. Well, you know, our show was supposed to go live at 9. And the thing is, is that without Internet, even though I could have called by phone, my kids would have been right there during the whole show because there's nothing for them to do. There's no Internet. There's no, there's no YouTubes. So they would have they would have been right by my side and there's no way we would have been able to do a show anyway. So finally that fixed itself probably 11 o'clock Monday night. And we have not had any problems since. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Good. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm ready. This will be my first Spider-Man show. I think, uh, since yeah. you know, we're supposed to do it one Monday, this will be my first one this week. We've did a, met- I did a metal hammer of doom there Wednesday, but, haven't had a chance, to, the opportunity to discuss anything Spider-Man related yet. Yeah, this has been Spider-Man, supposed to be Spider-Man week uh, on the Radulich and Broadcasting Network. Um, so we've, we've, uh, we just decided, you know, um, well, we, since we didn't do a source material show, and I know they did uh, um, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming on Dame New Hollywood. And mm-hmm. uh, what did you all do on Metal Hammer or Doom? I'm so sorry I didn't get to listen in. Oh, no, we didn't do anything Spider-Man related there. We just did, uh, what was it? It was, oh, Power Flow. It was just me and Mark. Okay, you know Cypress Hill, right? Yeah. You remember, you remember Cypress Hill? Uh, the, the, the oh, big, absolutely. Uh, okay. All right, well, the front man. He's in the membrane. There you go. The front man, Be Real, <laughs> went off and made a, did a, is doing a side project with uh, Chuck D from Public Enemy. And what? Yeah. Now hold on. That isn't the good news in relation to the show. Yeah, he's 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 doing what a side project. <laughs> Chuck D and Rage Against the Machine. So that band what? came together. Yes, that band comes together and they created a um, they created a band called Prophets of Rage. All right. Now wow. there's another band or there's another band member of Cypress Hill called Sin Dog. He's the guy that if you remember any any Cypress Hill song, he's the guy always going like it's from the boom. You know, he always has that Yeah, weird. yeah, yeah. Okay, that's Sin yeah. Dog. So Sin Dog does almost the exact same thing. He goes off and finds members of Fear Factory, Biohazard, and a, a metal band called Downset and it's basically yeah. a rap metal album where sin dog is doing the lyrics so that is power flow that's who we reviewed this past wednesday had nothing to do with spider-man but it's and we got into some fun in-depth discussion of course you were you were part of that and what uh mark decided to tell a funny story on there so if you guys are interested oh, no. yeah you guys are interested go in there and uh and check it out he, he, no no no, he no, no. Real- if you guys are interested <laughs> I want to know what he talk, what he talk, what he said about me. <laughs> no, I want anything about you. He just has a real. He it's funny because he has an issue with telling. Uh, he has an issue with telling kids to say inappropriate things. Apparently, uh, he just shared oh, a video. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he just shared a video of his son saying butt crack at a restaurant, which is so funny because yeah, Wednesday he shared the butt crack. He shared a story from what he was like twenty some years old, where he had. Well, I wouldn't say he had. He didn't. He certainly didn't put her up to it. But his niece, I think it was, it was some relation of his, said something very inappropriate about Denny's, and uh, so that that caused wow. 
yeah, that caused a little bit of a – I made sure to put out a picture of Denny's and made sure to put on there that they're not a sponsor because they certainly wouldn't be after that story. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we had a good time. We had a good time on there. Good, man. Well, we um, – here on the Screen Boy podcast, we have decided to do a show basically <laughs> – I love the way you 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 titled it on. Uh, <laughs> it fits. Uh, yeah, some sort of uh, some sort of Spider-Man show. <laughs> so what, what is that? What it said? Yeah, I got to check it again. Yeah, some kind of um, some kind of Spider-Man some kind discussion. Of, some kind of Spider-Man discussion. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, we I, I I have entitled tonight is why Spider Man. Now uh, we call you Street Level Starch. That's a nickname that uh, that's that, that you have, and uh, that's because uh, out of all the Marvel and DC, mostly Marvel with you, out of all the Marvel characters, um, you relate mostly to the street level guys, uh, yeah. like Punisher and Spider Man, and. Um, I, I, you, I don't think you've read much Luke Cage and, and Iron Fist, but but Daredevil and guys like that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you would. If I was reading comics back in the '90s, the furthest, you know, I I kind of my I guess I would say that my my tastes went out there was maybe like to the mutant titles like X Men, Cable, things like that. But I certainly wasn't yeah. reading a lot of the cosmic stuff. Uh, I always no, kept that, it more, uh, you know. I was I was more the Spider Man guy, the Punisher guy, the street level dude. Mm-hmm. I think you and I, um, as far as our uh, comic book uh, taste went, and uh, I think you and I shared a lot, in, or share a lot in common because the cosmic stuff I did enjoy, but I didn't collect mm-hmm. as much as it as I did. You know, I I collected Spider Man, I collected all the just because it was cool uh, to collect the mutant titles. I collected, you know, X Men, X Factor. X caliber. <laughs> I've got some X caliber in there, um, <laughs> but also hit you know some of the bigger teams like you know Avengers and a few others. Um, you know Fantastic Four. I collected here and there in Fantastic Four, um, but also like the Hulk. But but when it comes down to the nitty gritty, the people that are there every day taking care of the everyday stuff, you got to go with the street level guys, man, because they are they are the more relatable characters. Because uh, it's Spider-Man stopping the mugger, it's Punisher obliterating the uh, the drug dealers, and uh, you know it's uh, Luke Cage and and uh, and Iron Fist, you know Power Man and Iron Fist getting hired to take on the whatevers. <laughs> I, I didn't mean that to them, so. but I know they did. You know, heroes for hire, so they take on you know they take on the cases, and um, so it it, it it was more. Um, they they had more of an everyman feel, more so than like Captain America and a few others. Now Cap is one of my all time favorite uh, uh, comic book uh, heroes. He, uh, I mean, he, he is America. You know, he is the epitome of of you know what you want to be as a superhero. You know, uh, uh, righteous, honorable, trustworthy. You know, leader. <laughs> so he's oh, Captain yeah. America. Yeah, yeah, he exemplified but, all that. Yeah, exactly. But you know, but you got you know, like I said, this purse snatchers and the stuff that uh, you know, you don't see Captain America, you know, um, patrolling the city and looking for crimes like that to stop. You yeah, know? he was the heavy. Um, he was so, he was he was involved in the the big stuff. You know, the world threatening yeah, stuff. Yeah, he was the Doctor Dooms. He was the. Uh, um, <laughs> What? Who else did he? You know, well, I mean, there's yeah, I mean, so many people that he, you know. There's so many people Red that he Skull. took on. Red Skull, uh, Doctor Doom. You know, well, the Avengers mostly. You know, Doctor Doom, uh, Fantastic mm-hmm. Four, really. But uh, I remember the Avengers had some tussles with with old, uh, uh with the doc, the good Doctor, the bad Doctor. Um, <laughs> so he was, you know, the Red Skull. He was, uh, uh, you know, all these, you know, uh, world threatening. Entities, you know, villains. Hydra. Uh, Captain America was there. Hydra. Um, you know, back in you know World War Two, he fought the Nazis and he fought uh, along with Red Skull. He fought Hitler. I mean, I've, you know, Screaming Boy. Uh, we post a picture to our Facebook every Fourth of July, and I per- post one to my personal Facebook every Fourth of July. Captain America punching Hitler in the face. 
You know, so you know, Happy <laughs> Fourth right. of July. Here's a picture of Cap, you know, punching Hitler. So, um, uh, but you know, he doesn't jump on the on his Captain America motorcycle and patrol the streets and you know and punch out the the purse snatcher and the bank robber. Mm-hmm. So when you think about these guys and you think about the hero aspect of it. None other, no other hero that you really, you know, you could think of comes to mind quicker than Spider-Man. Because, you know, the Punisher, uh, he he kills people. I mean, so he's not really, he's your anti-hero. He's your, yeah. he's your, uh, yeah, he, he's your Han Solo, your, um, you know, because he shot first, Han shot first. I will never say anything else. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, he he's your, you know, well, I mean, he just—he's a killer. So you don't really look to him to be in the hero. And then your Daredevil, Daredevil did that, but then he's got a lot of different problems going on with Kingpin, uh, the Hand. I mean, he fights ninjas for goodness' sakes, and he's—he's um, he's a lawyer too. So while he does that, he's got bigger things going on, you know. And then you got Luke Cage and and uh, and and Iron Fist. They—they they do it for money. Or they did it for money, then they joined the Avengers, you know, things like that. But the one that's always out there, the one that's swinging, you know, building the building, the one that you will do everything you can to help the little man, the the common man, the working man, is none other than Peter Parker, Spider Man. That's right. Now, he's the one that will sacrifice his personal life, his jobs. His, you know, his love life, everything, you know, his his relationship with his aunt, his relationship with his friends, uh, he he will sacrifice everything so he can go out and he can try to make his, you know, do his part to make the world right. So um, that kind of answers my first questions for me was why Spider Man? Why what makes him? What makes me a fan of Spider Man? And I guess that you know I answered my own question because he, you know, he is that guy. He's the one that uh, he's the workhorse of of the superhero community. Um, mm-hmm. So, how long have you been? A, I know you're a big Spider-Man fan. How long have you been a Spider-Man fan? Oh well, I can remember some of the, one of the first few comics I ever read, and I really wish I could find the issue um i i can see a cover but i don't think it is that cover uh it, it, seriously dude 19 man i even think i posted this to my facebook a while like maybe a couple years back it's like one of the first comics i ever bought was a peter parker spectacular spider-man okay and there is a there's a picture of i don't even know if it i don't think it's uh, I don't think it's Gwen Stacy. It's some other lady. Mm. She's got blonde hair. She's kind of looking up in the, you know, uh, off the corner of the page. It's just her, it's, it's his huge face. And she's got her like hand to her mouth. Like she's frightened with something. And there's, if I remember correctly, there's like a bunch of Spider-Men uh, all around her. I'll find the picture and post it. But that was, that literally was like 1980. I want to say 82 or 83 that I had my hands on that comic. Wow. So we're talking five years old that I can remember. I can remember mm. reading that comic, getting a hold of it. There was a battle in there about with uh, uh, he's he's down on the docks doing something. Uh, and, you know, of course, doing this, the street level thing where he's catching these guys in the act. I can't remember who's behind it. I don't know if it was Tombstone or if it was um, I don't even know if Tombstone was around at that point, but there, there was some big villain that had a hand Hammerhead, in it. Hammerhead, somebody, yeah. Yeah, something like that. And I didn't, you know, I remember reading that, and I don't think it, like, changed my life or anything. I just remember that being my first Spider-Man comic. Okay, now, yeah. when I really, really got into Spider-Man was, so, just to be clear, this is kind of, you know, we're we're on this, you do a pop culture podcast. I do the comic book podcast. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people yes, that may be listening may may not they may not be familiar with the comics at all. They all they may have watched are like the movies or the cartoons. So me personally, it was comics first. I don't remember 
much about any cartoons, if any, because the car- last cartoons I can remember watching was in the early 90s with X-Men. Mm-hmm. And those are about the only Marvel cartoons I can ever remember actually catching. And, of course, as I uh, went to college and things like that, cartoons kind of fell off the radar for me. They were still out there, like the Silver Surfer cartoon, things like that. But I don't remember watching any Spider-Man-related yeah. stuff. But now, when I became a fan of Spider-Man, that was probably in the, I would say, late 80s. And it was as... Uh, it was as Inferno was going on. I can remember catching a, a, a bunch okay. of those issues and getting in, involved in the the massive crossover Inferno. And it kind of leaked over into Spider-Man. What was going on in Inferno was pretty much limbo or hell on earth happened. That's probably the mm-hmm. best way. Inanimate objects became demons. Demons were all over the place, and it was. It was just bas- – I think it basically took over Manhattan. So all our favorite heroes in Manhattan had to deal with this insanity going on around them. I mean people were being accosted by mailboxes. It was just insane you know, because these mailboxes <laughs> right. were, were demons and stuff. Uh, but Spider-Man had to deal with the same thing. This was, this was uh, actually affecting him in some ways. So I think I had some issues of amazing at that point. And, of course, they were doing the multi-crossover stuff between all the titles. They had Web of Spider-Man. They had Spectacular Spider-Man. They had Amazing. And then, you know, McFarlane comes on, and they do just the adjective list. But McFarlane was doing some issues of Amazing Spider-Man that I clearly remember having to get. I was just like, okay, I've got to get these. I've got to get these. And that was usually around the late 80s. So that that's when I yeah. first really got into Spider Man, enjoying enjoying what was being put out there. I have a whole I have a run of Web of at that point in time. It was probably like eighty eight or eighty nine, where um, it, it's it's just because I I go down to people's news and I would get that next issue. I had to read what was going to happen next. The Lo- there, there was the Lobo Brothers, these two werewolf guys, if <laughs> I remember correctly, and it had and yeah. Tombstone was in jail. Robbie Robertson was in jail. Tombstone was like blackmailing Robbie Robertson or something like that. It was, it and it it grabbed my imagination and captured my and captured my imagination. And I I was okay. You know, I can dig this. Now, of course, that led to. Uh, me liking other properties at that point in time, Mm X-Men. But really, I would say that Spider-Man might be my intro to comics. Because if he was the guy, if he was the one I actually grabbed a hold of that first comic that I ever had my hands on that I can remember, then that kind of started it. And and that's, that's your typical fare. If you're a Spider-Man fan, Spider-Man has been around since the sixties. And yes, he has. Yes, he has. What? We're talking. We're 50 years out from that now. That's quite a. That's quite an accomplishment for a character like that to be, to be, you know, to stay involved in pop culture that long. Um. So, but yeah, there you go, man. There's, there's, there's my introduction to fandom. Um. Now we have we we have a deep question as to why Spider Man though. Yeah. You know, why. Why is it Spider Man? I mean, I what? you want me to kick, mean, you want me to kick this off, or you want you got something you want to kick say it first? off? Kick it off, man. Do I'll it. kick it off. I'll kick it off. I'll kick out the jams. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, sure. Do it. Uh, we okay? I think number one, why Spider Man is because he he represents. I'd say he represents me and you in some way. He represents a lot of mm-hmm. people in some way. The the nerdy kid that yeah. you know is not is not the coolest guy around. Uh he he certainly yeah. does not have luck with women. He he almost doesn't have luck at all. I mean there's well I can't remember who coined it, what's that? Well you go ahead. You're going you're going there. I'm going the same direction. We there's a toy, there's a term that's coined. I can't remember who introduced me to it. I don't know if it was you or if it was somebody else that we had on the podcast. There's something called Parker Luck. I think you may have actually yeah. the first one I ever that ever said that that I I had actually heard that about uh, or heard that from. <laughs> but yeah, Parker Luck is where you know this kid 
continues, no matter how hard he strives, he just keeps, you know, it keeps falling, it almost, it's not falling on his face, but it's not, his life just doesn't go that well. So anybody, I think, can identify with that happening in their life. You're not usually handed everything you want on a silver platter. Right. But what happens with Peter is, is he gets these amazing powers. And they turn his life around. And there isn't mm-hmm. too many people out there that I, I know now that would, you know, would love to have be able to do some of the stuff that he does. Swing through a city. Right. Uh, I mean, uh, super strength. Uh, he is spider sense to know when danger is going to happen. And to watch that happen to this character who, had, who was down on his luck most of the time, it's – it's invigorating. Now, we we idolize somebody like Captain America. We yes. we look at Cap and we say, man, that that guy has he's got he's got the physique, he's got the morals, he's got this, he's got that. But the other thing that he's got is the dude was like, I'm sure he was like near the end of his 20s, going into his 30s when he became a superhero. Um, well, I think he did that going into the army, but. but he was an he adult. Was probably around, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, he was a well. He was more of an adult than 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 Peter was because Absolutely. he was 18, 19 years old, you know. And then as he grew, you know, he fought the entire war, so he yeah. was in his you know close to his mid twenties when he you know, uh, and then and on. So yeah, probably, I always uh, looked he's at probably uh, older than that because he was rejected so many times from the army. That's true. I always looked at Captain America as being the, you know, he was the he was the adult, the representation of what a, a yeah, perfect adult absolutely. would be. Mature. Peter Parker's, yeah, yeah. Peter Parker's not responsible. <laughs> yeah. Right. Peter Parker is not exactly. As a matter of fact, I mean that one of the biggest plot points in Peter Parker's, you know, origin story is the fact that he is not responsible at one point, and it really has an impact on his life. So, again. Everybody can identify with that. So it's a – I think Pete represents a lot of the comic book reading demographic. We're not – you know, I'll, I don't know too many that were playing on the football team in, in ninth grade, tenth grade that were reading comics, okay? Right. They were the, they're the jocks, you know. They're the guys that – the, the, the physical types. I'm not saying that that was just never happened, and I'm just saying, in in my school, it didn't happen. Um, the nerdy guys were. The nerdy guys were having the discussion about Star Wars, comic books, and Star Trek, and all that. Right. right. Yeah. Um, and that's who Peter Parker was. So, but now, dude, I mean, what a it's almost like a reversal of how we were brought up. What how. Mm-hmm. We examine the nerd culture compared to 30, 20 or 30 years later down the line. Um, Absolutely. It's, it's, it, it, is not, it, it is like one of the hottest things out there. Uh, did, did Spider-Man break any records? I don't know. I didn't look at any – I don't know if you saw any movie-related uh, news the or anything. Movie? Yeah. I haven't, I haven't really checked. So okay. I, I'm, I'm it sure wouldn't it surprise did, but... me. I mean, we got we got comic book movies breaking records left and right, and yeah. it just amazes me to sit here today and be on a podcast talking about how much nerd culture has taken over the world. Practically, mm-hmm. it really has. Some of the hottest movie properties out there that people go see: Star Wars, Marvel movies. Okay. Those two yep. are probably some you, you you count those two and so it's 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 money and it's in it's impacting everybody. You go if you probably talk to somebody thirty years ago and you said, Do you know who Spider Man is? Most likely they would have known. Okay? Mm-hmm. But if you would have asked them, Okay, do you know who the Punisher is thirty years ago? You might have been on the Absolutely. order of like thirty percent <laughs> people might know. But today, because yeah. of the way the comic book culture is blown up, dude, everybody knows who the Punisher is. It's right. it's just it's fun to be in an age 
where I'm watching that happen. So, uh, but yeah, Spider-Man, I'll tell you why Spider-Man, because by golly, we're all Spider-Man. Yes. You know, we could probably just end the podcast on that, you know? (laughs) We are all Spider-Man. Good night, everybody. (laughs) We are all Spider-Man. Good night and uh, be good to each other. (laughs) 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 Wow. Yeah, absolutely, man, because, um, wow, I don't have anything else to follow that up with. That was that was incredible. I mean, it's so true. Well, tell because, me about your first Spider-Man experience. Oh, hey, what do you, man. Do you, was it movies? Was it, uh, cause what, what, movies didn't really hit until. It was watching reruns of the of amazing the show. Spider-Man show with oh, Nick Cannon. Super Fri- oh, wait a second. It's not Super Friends. What no, is it? I'm talking about the live, live action, action show. Wah, wah, yeah, wah, that wah, ran from 77 wah. to 79. <laughs> yeah, was we it have good? one web. I never shooter. watched a single episode. Never saw. Never saw. It an was awful. <laughs> but oh it was no! So good then. It was so good then. I mean, he had one web shooter, and it and it shot rope. Um, and uh, or <laughs> you know, it, it was so it's so bad now, but it was so good because it was Nicholas Hammond. He played Peter Parker, uh, and then of course you had uh, J. Jonah Jameson in there. Uh, but then you had – that's where it kind of went away because it didn't really have – it had uh, – I don't think it had Aunt May or it didn't have Betty Brant. It didn't have um, – goodness. Uh, it didn't have any of the, the people that you would imagine be in there. Um, but uh, I remember him fighting a lot of – uh, people in uh, like Hong Kong. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm being serious when I say this. Uh, Robbie Robertson was in there, um, but it only lasted for two seasons. But they would play these these uh, the uh, the reruns, and I would watch them as a kid and just absolutely love it because you know, okay, May Parker was in there. She's only in there for one episode, and then uh, I do believe uh, Jesse. I think we have a caller. And I oh, think I my goodness. Who it is. <laughs> All right, well, hold on just a second here. Area code 740. I have no idea who this I is. I don't know. I don't know who it is. <laughs> Go ahead. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Who are we talking to? Go ahead, Michael. The illustrious <laughs> Michael K. Easton. Oh, Michael K. Easton. Don't forget Jordan Lowe. Jordan Lowe. Hey, Jordan Lowe. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Is this and a takeover? And you're talking to three four of the Kapow Podcast. Holy crap. Are you guys – wait wait a second. Now, this are you guys – This is a Kapow guys... Cup Podcast yeah. takeover. It is. It is. Are you guys? Uh, are you guys recording tonight? You guys got to be recording tonight. You usually, guys, you guys record on Friday. Yeah, we just finished up doing a show about Spider Man, if you can believe it. And we thought you guys oh. were live, so we just had to jump in and see what you guys were chatting about. Heck yeah, this man! Is awesome, man. Well, so we have our friends from the Kapow Podcast, uh, and uh, we're super excited. So we have uh, the existential question of, <laughs> I guess you could call it that of. Why Spider-Man? Uh, Jesse just beautifully explained to us for him why Spider-Man. But what makes us like Spider-Man? What makes us relate to Spider-Man? Uh, what makes Spider-Man... Well, don't ask um, that no, 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 wait a minute. You're assuming we like Spider-Man. <laughs> what? I don't have a clue what's going on. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> What? All right, now hold on. Okay, let me let me let me okay. let me jump in. All right, Michael Case, and yeah. I know you're a Superman fan. Okay, we've we, you've been on the Source Material podcast, uh, and we've discussed Superman at length. But uh, do you, do you have some love for Spider Man? Well, of course, he's the geeky nerdy character that gets to put on a costume, and he gets to be himself when he's finally pulled the mask over. That's right. 
I, I, I definitely feel there what he's saying there. How about you, Jordan? Yes. Uh, Spider-Man is not only my favorite comic book character, he is my favorite fictional character ever created. Oh, wow. I think Spider-Man just encompasses everything about being a hero, everything about, you know, taking what you were given in life and making the best of it and doing things for others instead of yourself and being greater than being greater than uh, what you were born with and just taking it out there to the limit every day. Very cool. All right. Now, now Cliff Barnes, we saved the, the most praise for last because I know you've got it all bottled up and you've been, even though you did a podcast tonight on it, you probably have more to go. How much love do you have for Spider-Man? <laughs> <laughs> Where do I start, Jesse? <laughs> uh, I, my, my love has no limits, let me tell you. Oh, boy. <laughs> I believe that. 100%. 100%. Now, I have to be truthful. I was the only one that did not go see the movie. What? You did not? I did not, no. Okay. All right. They said well, well, like a couple minutes to Iron Man, and I was out. I said, I'm not wasting my time or my <laughs> hard-earned money on this. Oh. <laughs> but you missed uh, it. You missed you. I mean, like. That doesn't surprise me. There's like, so I'll much wait more to it than just seeing Iron Man, you know? <laughs> um, it's, it's not. It's a Spider Man movie that Iron Man just happens to show up in. There you go. And that's why I didn't go see it. Oh, so wrong. So wrong. Um, but we're, we're just, you know, we're we're relating to our, our first, uh, we're also talking about, you know, when we first became Spider-Man fans. I remember playing, um, it was one of the toys that I always, you know, I always took with me to my grandparents, uh, and they had it there forever, and I found it at my grandparents. It was my Secret War Spider-Man figure. Don't oh. have the shield, but I had that. Had all the webbing rubbed off of him uh, because, you know, the black paint would rub off of those figures. Um, so he was just a solid red and blue Spider-Man. Uh, with he he was Spider-Man. the uh, Scarlet Spider. He was a Scarlet Spider. And then uh, so I remember playing with that. And I remember, uh, do you do you three, do you guys, does anybody remember the Amazing Spider-Man from 1977 to 79? Are you talking about the live action movie series? The live action series that Spider Man only had one web shooter and it shot rope. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's I what I saw that on TBS. Or, um... yeah, uh, yeah, watching the repeat, the the reruns on TBS. Yep. Yes, sir. That's when I first, you know, became a, a. That's when I first started really liking Spider-Man. Man, um, that that show will always have a special place in my heart. Uh, even though it was, you know, today's standards, it's pretty pretty awful. But uh, you know, and then it went completely away from you know the characters in the comic books to they made up characters for it. But it was it was just it's it's special to me because that's when I first started. Really getting into Spider Man. Then the All comic right, I got, book. I, I have a quick question. Does anybody remember the Spider Man Atari video game? I do. Yep, found it. <laughs> that I can remember. Cliff hates Spider Man so much he has the arcade. He has the Atari game. Or I love Atari so much that I have the. <laughs> do you have like okay so this is the game where all it was was just like going completely up a building and trying to like avoid bombs or something and then when you reach the top i can't even remember what happens when you reach the top like you would i don't know if the you want or if you the top. okay all right yeah and then you're what, avoiding what, the pumpkin bombs okay all right now see it's coming back to me now so legitimately legitimately do not remember <laughs> playing that game. It, it, it's been probably close to 30 years since I've – maybe maybe 30 years. Yeah, 87 since I played 88 or somewhere around then. But there, 
That's uh, I, now, Ronnie. You talk about bad stuff that has fond memories. Yes, that is one thing that I can clearly remember. Where I was just like, man, this game sucks. But it was the only thing you had that you could play <laughs> on a, a video game. That was Spider-Man. Yeah. You know, we didn't have Maximum Carnage, which is our outro music, by the way. We didn't have, uh, uh, yeah. you know, Super Nintendo Maximum Carnage or Genesis Maximum Carnage to play. Um, yeah. I, I I do want to throw it back here. Do Michael K. Easton, do you remember, like, your first Spider-Man, you know, the first time you recognized or had your hands on something, whatever introduced you to Spider-Man? Was it the live action series or was it something before that? Was it comic books? Uh, Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Iceman mm-hmm. and Firestar. I totally said that I did not remember cartoons involving Spider-Man and I forgot about that one because we had Iceman <laughs> and Firestar in that and I, I clearly remember watching mm-hmm. that on a black and white TV set in my bedroom. Now, that was a long time ago, and I don't know if that's what made me pick up the comic or vice versa. Um, so Spider-Man and Amazing Friends. All right, how about how about you, Jordan Lowe? Uh, I had some of the, some of the comics. Um, I remember very specifically it was a reprint of the first appearance of the Wizard that I read time and time again with him trying to turn everyone in America into lizard people. And I, I remember reading that dozens and dozens of times. Uh, one of my earliest memories, though, I, I, uh, I dressed up as Spider-Man for Halloween in maybe second or third grade. And it wasn't, wasn't a store-bought costume. My mom made a costume out of, you know, sweatpants, and then she drew all the webs on it. She took a doily off the couch and, like, sewed it into the glove. So oh, I could that's awesome, my man. wrist out and, like, throw a doily. <laughs> But I was convinced no one would know who I was at the school function if I didn't say anything. No one would know it was me under the mask. And when I walked in, I couldn't help myself. I said hi to this kid I knew. And then he walked around the whole night saying, that's Jordan. That's Jordan in that mask. That's Jordan. And I've seen that kid ever since. (laughs) (laughs) How did you know my secret identity? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, Cliff, tell us how I, – I just want to know how the hatred started. I want to know how the hatred I started. I don't honestly hate Spider-Man. It's a joke that we've ran with. What? I just can't don't, relate don't to back. I just, Don't go back the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> too, many, too many layers. I, I I just never related to Spider-Man. He was too a little too nerdy and dorky and – Quit talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these two, we got the Peter Parker and Flash Thompson here with the cousins, Michael and Clint. <laughs> and I had all the cool toys. Michael had to dig his up out of the dirt. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, Ronnie? <laughs> yeah. I think we've left him speechless. Oh, yeah. How do you, how do you follow this up? A little bit. You, you, yeah, you got I mean, some, you got some other questions for the Kapow boys here. <laughs> yeah, um, so we all know um, Spider-Man is the wisecracking, street-level purse snatcher, bank robber hero, right? No, they, they, not that he did those things; he stopped those people. Um, but he's also a very tragic character as well. And I don't care if you hate him or you don't, <laughs> but you have to agree that he's a very tragic character because. Um, he has gone through the, off the top of my head. I can't think of anybody that's really gone through quite as much loss, uh, as Peter Parker. Um, he is one of the characters, uh, in Mar- in the Marvel universe that, uh, he's had, you know, one, one of his main characters has stayed dead over the years and that's uncle Ben, you know, I think he's the only Marvel character, you know, a, a character in the Marvel universe that hasn't been resurrected. Um, you know, in 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 the six one six, just in other other you know universes, he's he's alive. But uh, he lost Gwen Stacy. I mean, his marriage was wrecked to the one that he you know his true love you know Mary Jane, which was a stupid storyline you know involving Mephisto or whatever. Uh, but you know his his marriage was wrecked. I mean, he's always had no money. So much, in fact, when he was invited to join the New Avengers. 
the I remember the panel very well where uh, uh, Tony Stark and Captain America, where Iron Man and Captain America were going around um, inviting everyone, and to to Wolverine, uh, his his line was, "We have beer," and Wolverine says, "I'm in," and then <laughs> you know, "We have this," I'm in, and then to to Peter Parker says, "We have money," he goes, "Oh, thank God," you know, so and he was hugging Iron Man, and so he's he's a tragic character. Even when the Parker luck seems to turn around in these in the newer comic books, uh, he you know, and he's a uh, multi billion multi who runs his own company, everything, and nothing seems to really quite go right. You know, his he lost a um, a friend in Silver Sable, uh, you know, recently. You know, it seems like everybody around him dies or gets hurt in some way. So he's a very tragic character, and. Um, it, 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 do you think that the Marvel Universe, and this is open to to Jesse, this is open to to all you, all the you know to all the Kapow guys. Do you think the Marvel Universe has un you know is unjustly put him through um, too much pain, or does that make him the character that he is? Does that make Peter Parker slash Spider Man uh, the relatable and you know? Uh, Character that you can uh, that you you can get behind. Does it make him? Does it give him the 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 character that he, that they that we have today, Jesse? Well, I hate to I hate to say that we want you know death and destruction on a character in any way, uh, and, and that's not mm. the case, you know. Um, that it, it, but it adds a dimension to the guy. You know what I'm saying? It, it makes him, we, again, we all go through that loss. He's completely identifiable in some aspects, especially with, you know, like someone losing a loved one um, and having to deal with that. It's, you know, it, I, in my opinion, I think that it's, I'd love to see him turn around. They've, they, they've been trying that with, in the comics, They've been trying to make it, you know, him successful. I mean, I don't know if you've read any issues of Spider-Man lately, but it wasn't too long ago where this guy, there's Peter Parker Industries now. Uh, it's something that, you know, that you didn't see that right. coming. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but, yeah, I don't want to see this guy continually fall on his face. I want to see him be successful. I want to see him get married. I want to see him have, uh, have, a, have a happy marriage. That's one thing that, I hated about, you know, them undoing the marriage. That was a big step backwards, in my opinion. There was a lot more that they still could have done with that character, but maybe they felt that they were limited. Uh, I'm going to let the Kapow boys take over on this one because I, yeah. you know, I, I know these guys know their comics as well. So uh, please, uh, I'll toss it over to uh, Jordan. You know, you, you sir, yeah. uh, go for it. I, yeah, I remember reading some old letters columns that people would write in because they loved Peter Parker so much. They would complain that Stan Lee is being too mean to Peter and putting him through too much trauma. And, you know, not thinking that's where the drama comes from. You have to put his back against the wall and, you know, put him in dangerous, hurtful situations for him to overcome those things. But people, yeah, there was always a sort of, you know, uh, Parker got it worse than anybody, and people like would uh, take it very personally when that happened. But yeah, I, I think it just goes back to that character, especially in like the early Ditko years. He he quit being a superhero like every week. He was sick of it because things never went his way. He never came out ahead. So you know, he was ready to just throw a suit in the trash and move on. But going back to that core value that he had, or was taught by Uncle Ben that he couldn't just give up on this stuff. So that just showed his resilience that no matter what the world threw at him, he was going to buck up and get the job done. Very good. Um, Cliff. <laughs> now I'm going to interrupt this. <laughs> I, I'm going to take care of it before he trashes Peter. No, uh -oh. James, go for it. <laughs> I, I think... Spider-Man's tragedy is the greatness of that character because everyone else's life is going right but his and all the tragedy that he sees 
or he experiences just makes him a better character because no matter what, every single time it can be the worst, he's still going to rise to the occasion. He's going to still try to do the best he can given the crappiness of his situation. And I think that actually makes him one of the most strongest, realistic Marvel characters that they've ever created. Now, Cliff can talk. <laughs> My thought is this. Now, you two, Jesse and Ronnie, are known professional wrestling fans, correct? correct. Oh, yeah, correct. brother. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Uh, now, going with well, that thought, and if if you remember back when Peter Foote got his powers and he decided he was going to be a professional wrestler, could you have not gotten behind that whole, if, if Peter had stuck with that, he went and he wrestled the Macho Man and, and took him on, if, if that, instead of becoming a superhero and just uh, living this life of pity and always playing the victim, wouldn't you rather him become the next Hulk Hogan or Macho Man or even Ric Flair and, and used his powers to entertain the masses for all these years. Ronnie? Jesse, go ahead. Oh, oh. thanks. All right. No, no, no. I'll go ahead. So the question is, would I have loved to have seen Spider-Man just make a run for the championship? All right. I'm gonna. It, it, that's pretty much what you're asking me. Would I love to have seen him in a Fed in the Federation, right, Cliff? Am I getting that right? Yeah, as like an as a Rudis story or an alternate. Uh, let, in, in another world, Spider-Man decided he was going to be the professional wrestler. Let in, me in, in your life. I'm itching to answer this because I want. I, I'm about to express some absolute mind-defying nerddom here. Okay, all right. Now, in WWE 2K, which one was it, Ronnie? It was one where they just, I think it was 2K10 or 2009. They introduced create a story mode, all right? Now, I had a story where, this is legit. I didn't finish it, but this is legitimate, all right? Now, what what you could do on WWE 2K uh, or or 2009, whatever it was, you could uh, create your own character, so you know you could watch YouTube videos. Trust me, of like the Incredible Hulk versus Venom, uh, people who created these crazy mm-hmm. characters on there. And then they say, "Hey, guess what? Now you can create your own storylines." Albeit it was rather in depth, and you definitely needed a keyboard, and there were some limitations. You could create your own storyline. Now I had this storyline where this great dimensional storm opened up. All right, and just crazy crap started to happen. Non-fictional characters became real, you know, uh, or non-fictional. Hey, what do you think of that? Non-fictional characters. We'll try <laughs> fictional characters. Ah, fictional, characters. <laughs> fictional characters became real, and all of a sudden, like, the, the battleground was the ring, the WWE ring, where, well, Vince McMahon wakes up, and even though all this crap hit the fan, The Undertaker's missing, the show's still got to go on. So here we have SpongeBob versus the Punisher. I mean, just crazy stuff's happening in there. So, <laughs> I mean, it was it was this great story I had all mapped out about how the the worlds were trading heroes and and all these just uh, comic book characters, literary characters were all coming together and fighting for like almost similar to what you see in Mortal Kombat, fighting for the middle earth or whatever you want to say. And they have to do it in the ring. Um, and I, anyway, so yes, sir. Not only would I want to see that, I did have something like that at one point on my Xbox 360. Okay. Follow that up, Ronnie Adams. Well, that was the wrong answer. Up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, We've known for some time now that I mean kayfabe has completely been broken, so we know you might you might want to explain what kayfabe is here because we kayfabe we, is the terminology wrestling term for carny speak the story I mean it's carny speak 
for they have just like you said opened the curtain and revealed the back and uh wrestling is uh predetermined yes and i'm not going to say fake because it is not fake because these guys go through hell and back in their on their bodies and everything else so definitely some respect there so um no, I wouldn't want to see Spider-Man in that because he would can be completely wasted. Um, he would, you know, have all these magnificent powers, but in in wrestling, he would be. It would come down to the Booker. So even if it even if it were like in a ring and it were uh, not predetermined and they were fighting for a belt, you know, what you know, boxing, UFC, or whatever. And he knocks the guy into the next row because he's super strong and possibly causes, you know, some bodily harm, you know, some wires and some casts and some neck braces and things like that. I would look and say, why is that guy a superhero? So my answer has I to think be no. the, the story, I think the Elseworld story that it would happen would have to be like <laughs> Spider-Man having to figure out how to limit his powers and, and not break somebody's neck and, you know, put somebody in and, put somebody in a suplex and, and then try and make this crazy run. I'd love to see it, Ronnie Adams. I don't, I, I don't know where you're coming from. Well, you, need to, you, you need to bring yeah. on your second half and ask that man as well. This, our, the second half of the okay. Screaming Boy podcast has arrived, by the way. Well, okay, yeah. He's not my second half. He's not my better half or anything like that. <laughs> so let's just get that out in the open. He is, <laughs> he is the other chair on the Screaming Boy podcast. He is the one and only Adam Runyon. Adam Runyon, are you with us? Hey, is Larry there? Oh, Lord. Larry? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's, it is I, the <laughs> other chair, although I've been sitting here for literally 45 minutes, but it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, we have... <laughs> Let's we have go the... all the way back to the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> We have a takeover happening right now. We have, uh, you know, our guests from the Kapow podcast, and you know, so I mean, anything could happen. You could sit. So what do you say? I don't want to look stupid. Is that, don't don't make us look dumb. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> don't make don't ruin this, Adam. No I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> don't fight you, bro. Come on. <laughs> but so, Adam, what was your first experience with Spider-Man? When did you first become a Spider-Man I have fan? To, I know you're a Spider-Man fan. It, my, I am. My my first experience is actually that of Jesse's because <clears throat> he mentioned literally literally in the beginning when I got on here about Spider-Man was like my first foray into superhero nerddom, you know, like and and I, and, and I like him don't understand really why, you know, except that Spider-Man was safe. You know what I mean? Like my parents knew that that they could. They could let me loose with Spider-Man, and then and it's not gonna you're not gonna have anything that's gonna like mess you up too bad, you know. Even though the Punisher may be in it somewhere, but it's not like yeah. reading the Punisher. You know what I mean? It's not like you're in a full-fledged, you know, <clears throat> um, Deadpool uh, comic book. But you know, it was, it, was, it was fairly safe, and 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 I think I think my my first foray into Spider-Man was the cartoon. It wasn't the uh, it wasn't the comic book. It was the, the cartoon on, on Fox 11. I used to watch that every Saturday morning, that and the X-Men cartoon. Oh, yeah. You know, so, so I, you know, my, my first uh, um, experience with Spider-Man was, was all the, the crazy. And, and the thing is, my son, my youngest son, loves Spider-Man now. And he watches the same thing. In fact, we watched it this morning. We watched a couple episodes this morning about Mysterio. How Mysterio was like, uh, was like masquerading as as uh, Spider Man and stealing all the crown jewels and stuff. It was cool, you know. It's, it's a it's a safe thing, you know. Mm. Okay. So not impressed, I, right? I, I, I know. Really, I, no, no, no. Hey no, guys. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I don't yeah. want to interrupt. And our runner just pulled up to take us on to the next party. Don't don't lie. Your phone is at like four percent because you forgot to charge it. Don't lie to the people. <laughs> uh, hey, guys, my Uber so is a one up. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you all came on. Uh, so 
you, you're, you guys are more than welcome on any time. And please, everybody, listen to the Kapow podcast. It's amazing. Uh, these guys are fantastic. So uh, go charge your phone. Yeah. Hey, but real, real quick before we go, um, I just want to let everybody know that we have now some Kapow, the pop culture podcast uh, magnets we're giving away to a few of our Jesse's. Um, hey. you can, if you stop by the Solid Comics in Marriott, Ohio, or Second to None Graphics on Third Street, Marriott, Ohio. Hey, or you could mail one to Burlington, North Carolina. <laughs> or we could do that. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I'm kidding, guys. Thank you so much. It's been, hey, you guys are a pleasure to have on here, and you're more than welcome on any time. And we appreciate you. Uh, oh, all right. <laughs> have a good night, guys. They, what they miss Later, they, guys. They Uber have a good night, guys. Later on. Later on, they miss their Uber or something. Nah. Uber is going to the party or something. Yeah. I don't think Uber runs here in Marietta. Trust me, I've looked. <laughs> <laughs> it runs here. Dude, dude, dude. run there, in Marietta. Here, dude, it's a it's a perfect chance for you to be the Uber driver. The Marietta Uber driver. Home. I'm gonna try. Yeah, I like think I'm gonna try Uber. Uber have, you, have either of you guys tried Uber yet? I have no, no, but I know people who much. have made a killing. I know people who really? have made a killing at it. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm thinking like, about they, like my. I was gonna say I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it when I, if I go to this concert in in Pittsburgh, I've got to park somewhere, and I'm thinking about parking like, you know, someplace either a Walmart or something like that that's in a good neighborhood, and then calling an Uber to take me to the stadium. So, I I'm I'm honestly, <laughs> hey, I've got my I've got my wits about me. Um, but, dude, but I like yeah. it. You can be like, dude, you call Uber Black. They're the ones that have like the limousines and the. Um, the uh, yeah. town cars and the really, really like the, you know, BMW M3s and M5s. My wife would love know. to hey. see something like that show up on the credit card statement. <laughs> hey, you know who <laughs> who's, never took who's, Uber? Who's Uber Black? <laughs> black Uber. You, you know who never took an it's Uber? It's me. It's me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Adam. Who never took an Uber? Spider-Man. I've never taken an Uber. Spider-Man. Oh, look, at, look at him trying to turn it around. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Spider Man yeah. has never taken yeah. an Uber. Pay attention to me. Although, although I will say that, <laughs> that Superman, Superman has probably taken an Uber just to just to hold up, you know, keep appearances up. <laughs> I want to take an Uber to your house right now, and <laughs> please do, man. I miss you. Yeah, I know. Oh wow, that was <laughs> awkward. Um, so, <laughs> I, mean, I like so much I, hurt. going back to what going back to what you said. Going back to what you said that Spider Man is safe. I can remember some storylines where that were not so safe for Spider-Man. Though. Yeah, it, it, going along with his tragic, his his tragic, um, the characteristic that he has of, of being a tragic person, you know, having all this tragedy in his life. I remember that uh, he was fighting the lizard, you know, uh, uh, Kurt Connors, and um, and trying to bring him back. From uh, crossing that, trying to keep him from crossing that line from humanity into uh, savage, you know, the, being a savage animal, you know, and, right. and crossing the line into becoming the lizard and not, you know, not having that dual personality. But it ended up that Kurt Connors, in the end, ate his own son. Yeah, dude. See that? W- yeah, I that w- wasn't in the cartoon. Oh, I I read. Are you? This just happened recently, right? Like within the it last pretty recently, yeah. Within, yeah, within the last yeah. ten years. Yeah. Um, yeah. I read that storyline. I was reading. I was actively yeah. reading Spider Man at that time, and it was the storyline was called Shed. Yep. And I remember it wasn't explicit. Like it wasn't like, oh yeah, here he is. He's chomping on his bones or anything. But right, right. It, left, it, it was like, uh, where's this kid? What happened to his kid? Because I was right, I, I probably said that out loud as I was reading the end of that story. <laughs> oh, you knew what you knew what happened to his kid. Yeah, yeah, you did. You you, but it was inferred, you know, kind of like, oh crap, no. I want to cover that on source material at some point because that yeah, really I had mean, me. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's I mean, the first. Episode. You look at that. That's, that's the first episode on the the cartoon. That's literally the first episode, but and it's exactly like you, you he described. Need his kid. But 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 he doesn't need his kid, right? Like he kind of, and, right. and I don't think he actually saved um, uh, the lizard from from you know becoming the lizard. I think it was just one of those things. He takes him to the zoo, and they kind of fight around in the zoo, and he you know goes off somewhere, and that that's it. That's kind of how it ends. So you look at things like that, and you know, being Parker, being Peter Parker, he carries the guilt of that with him. He carries the guilt of Uncle Ben being shot to with him every day. He he carries the guilt of accidentally killing his own girlfriend. Green Goblin threw Gwen Stacy off of uh, off of the building, right? Or off of the bridge. He goes to save her, hits her with a web line, and when he pulls it, it snaps her neck. Oh man. So not only does you know he the 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 consequences of his actions of being a jerk you know being the getting paid and not stopping uh, the burglar in the you know that robbed the the uh, the box office of the wrestling that he was involved in he didn't stop him and uh, and that that thief goes on to kill Uncle Ben he accidentally caused the death of his own girlfriend um, he is involved in the death of Harry Osborne. Uh, I'm sorry, Norman Osborn. Um, mm-hmm. So Harry Osborn is his best friend. So he, act, you know, he, he, the actions of them fighting cause Norman to, you know, to be impaled by, you know. And this is not in the movie. This is actually in the comic books as, as well. Um, you know, it was in the movie. It was in Sam Raimi's movie as well. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, he just recently lost Silver Sable. Um, the black cat has gone off her rocker in the new, newer issues, and you know he he feels guilty about that. Um, he carries the guilt of ruining his own relationship and happy life with Mary Jane. He carries more guilt than and than a Southern Baptist and a Catholic combined. And um, <laughs> it is it's oh, one of those things where like, and that's where I can I can almost get behind those people. That wrote into Stan, you know, Stanley, or wrote into Marvel Comics, saying, you know, for God's sakes, just you know, give Parker a break. And when they do give Parker a break and make him multi-billionaire and make give him his own Parker Industries, and he, you know, he's he's Spider-Man on the side. He has all these cool gadgets and cool, you know, new web shooters and everything else. He didn't create any of it. He's living off of. He's living off of the, the the hard work of Dr. Octopus, who was in his body at the time. Oh, wow. Yeah, from Superior Spider-Man. Wow. All that was created by Dr. Octopus, who saw the, 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 the potential that Parker had and just said, you know, screw all these people. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, get money. And make my own, you know, do this and and and, uh, and find a girl of my dreams. And, and I don't really care what anybody thinks of me. Whereas Peter Parker cares what everybody thinks and cares about people so much that, like I said, he has sacrificed his personal life, his professional life, his love life. He's sacrificed everything about himself to be a superhero. So yeah. that's why I think he's a tra- tragic character. And I think that's why... You know, more people relate with him because they're like, "Oh my gosh, there is so much drama in his life." When are they? You want him to come out on top. You want him to find the girl. You want him to um, finally just be rich and, and and of his own. You know, uh, find his find value in himself to 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 uh, to pro, you know uh, to have some sort of you know progress in life. Um, that he can call his own. So, you know, you're pulling, not only do you relate with him because he's a street level guy, not only do you, 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 uh, you, are you enthralled by the drama, but you also cheer for him. You want the best for him because you can't help but want the best for him because nothing goes right in his life. Uh, his, his arch nemesis, J. Jonah Jameson, his <laughs> aunt ends up marrying J. Jonah Jameson's uh, father. So, yep. you know, it, not only does this man hate Spider-Man, but
But now Peter Parker has to be, you know, his his <laughs> stepbrother. <laughs> let me let me give you let me give you a little bit of light uh, on the character of J. Jonah Jameson, just in what we were we were about to cover on source material. Now, Ronnie, I don't know if you had a chance to read the sh- the issue the two issues that we were going to uh, discuss on that show, but I can tell you we we were looking at stuff from the Gauntlet, which occurred I think in 2010, and yeah. there were just two two small issues that we were going to cover regarding the Vulture, but really the Vulture was almost I'd say he was a primary character in that storyline, but J. Jonah Jameson was probably just up there as well in that storyline. And I'll tell yeah. you why this, this is a, this is what's, how, this is what speaks to J. Jonah Jameson's character and how much, uh, I mean, he didn't really hate, he doesn't know Peter Parker, Spider-Man, but right. You know, Peter Parker has had to put up with a bunch of crap from JJJ just because he's Peter Parker and right. he's JJJ. In that in that two story arc, the vulture goes after J. Jonah Jameson to because he believes this is a totally different vulture than we're used to. This is a this is a almost like a mutated human has actual wings mm-hmm. and crazy looking jaw. But anyway, he goes after Jameson, thinking that Jameson was the one that created it. And he wants to revenge because this guy didn't, you know, the, the, the vulture is in this horrible state and he doesn't want to live and he wants to take revenge on whoever created him. So he goes after Jameson and Peter Parker is, is as Spider-Man, is hot on the trail. Uh, he attacks Jameson and all this, all this crap, you know, goes on and the press gets wind that Jameson is supposedly behind. Jameson, who, by the way, is the mayor of New York City at this point in time. Um, yep. But Press gets wind of it and says, oh, man, you're, Press gets wind that he may have created the vulture. Oh, you're responsible for a criminal, blah, 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 blah. Well, in the midst of the fight where Spider-Man shows up and Vulture's attacking Jameson, the vulture leaves, Jameson gets away unscathed, and to try and stop public from attacking Jameson, Peter Parker doctors some photographs to make it look like Jameson was fighting back against the vulture, even though it didn't happen. He put Jameson mm-hmm. in, in this picture, kicking the vulture, released it to the press. So the press would be like, Oh, well clearly he doesn't have anything to do with the vulture in any way. He's fighting against the person. Why would he, you know, they, they, they wouldn't, they certainly wouldn't be fighting if they were in the, in cahoots. So Jameson calls this press conference, sits everybody down and says, I want to thank everybody for being here. He brings Peter Parker up up on the stage, and Parker's thinking, well, he's going to thank me for the fact that I've helped him out and got him out from under the fire of the press, and that's what he's going to do. So he sits down and he says, I want to thank everybody for being here, and he brings up the photograph, and he says, unfortunately, this photograph is clearly doctored and fires <laughs> Parker and, and and says you are blacklisted. You'll never work at any other publication ever again. Right there on in front of everybody at this press conference. That is the relationship between Peter Parker and JJJ. JJJ was always on his crap all the time. And of course, well, he, I don't think it was just Peter. It was more so Peter because that's what we saw. But he was he was a jerk to just about darn near everybody. But the thing is, is that. Yeah. Imagine that, you know, this guy you grew up with as your boss, now he's the mayor, you just saved his butt from possibly getting impeached or some kind of crazy crap, all this heat from the press, and then he turns around and turns it over on you, fires you on stage, calls you a liar, which unfortunately he was, and that was the end of that two-story arc. Peter Parker's like, well, what am I going to do now? Parker Luck, uh, and another great representation of just how – Jameson and Parker never really got along. Very and good. I turn yeah, it over to absolutely. you. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I mean, long, long, awkward silence. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, that's perfect because, um, I mean, I think we've listed all of the reasons of why Spider-Man, because uh, he's relatable, he's dramatic, um, he's funny. And you just want him to succeed no matter what, you know, because he, he never does, you know, not really, you know. I mean, he may be able to 
buy fancy cars and everything, but is he really happy? No. Because money don't buy you love, son. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> my pappy done told about, me. My pappy done told me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I bought a lot of cool mother. stuff, and that's the same thing, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll right. go with that, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> it buys so, you a pretty sweet computer, right? Wait, sure. Yeah. Like you talk to all the sweet people <laughs> online. Um, hot chicks. Talk about the, hot chicks. Hot, let's talk about the Spider-Man movies real quick. Uh, let's talk about the first three that that we remember. Um, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man, Spider-Man Two, and Spider-Man Three. So um, with these ranked, uh, it would have to go Spider-Man Two, Spider-Man One, and a far distant. Um, yes. Microscopic Spider-Man Three. <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh, Spider-Man 3 was just awful. But uh, we saw some really good um, character renditions of Spider-Man characters in there. Um, J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson was just incredible. I, I think that he was made a fantastic J. Jonah Jameson. Um, if they, if you know, if they could, I think they should use him. I know they won't, but, you know, I know there's going to be a, a Spider-Man Homecoming sequel, but they need to use him as J. Jonah Jameson, but they can't because he's now Commissioner Gordon. But uh, uh, I thought he was great. I thought Tobey Maguire made an adequate, you know, a good Peter Parker, um, and the stuntmen made really good Spider-Man. Uh, <laughs> Tristan Dunst was there. She definitely was there in the movie. <laughs> she was there. <laughs> and um, in the in the Green Goblin, uh, Norman Osborn, I don't think you could have found a better one. Uh, Willem than, Dafoe. Uh, Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe, creepiest man in the world uh, when he wants to be. Uh, phenomenal <laughs> actor. Um, I think the shining star of the whole series is going to be um, – uh, is it going to be Doctor Octopus? Um, yes. Help me I out agree. for some reason. I can't, Alfred, I can't remember Alfred the Molina. actor's name. Alfred Molina. Alfred, Alfred Molina Man. is Doc Ock. I think uh, I think he was the shining star in that whole series, uh, and I think the one that uh, and the one a close second is going to be Thomas Hayden Church as Sandman. Hmm. Uh, I thought he did a great job as Sandman. Um, I think the one that uh, everybody farted on rightfully. And kind of uh, uh, deserves his place in last place with Topher, uh, Topher, Topher Grace, Grace as uh, as uh, as Venom. I thought that was ridiculous. Um, so those three movies, Sam Raimi, you didn't, you didn't Sam like that. You didn't like that. No, no, I didn't. Did you? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I liked it about as much as I liked emo Spider-Man. So okay, thank you. The only emo dance scene Spider-Man thing. Oh, yeah. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, uh, so Sam Raimi is a good director, but he definitely has his own way of directing things. Um, it was very campy, very you know, it was a comic book movie through and through, but it was very campy. It was very um, stylized. Uh, that goes along with uh, the rest of the of his work. Um, if anybody remembers his one of his, it, it was if not his first, but one of his first movies. I think it was his very first was Evil Dead, the original Evil Dead. Um, yeah. You know, lots of uh, lots of point of view camera work. Um, you know, funny, campy, uh, shaky cameras, you know, things like that. He he's very good at what he does. Uh, was he a, the right choice for the Spider-Man movies? Um, for the first one, yes, I think he was for this this style. Um, and as it goes along, I just think somewhere somehow um, it just the the writing was just awful, um, so it, it, it kind of suffered for that. Uh, would you all agree with that? Yeah, I definitely would. Absolutely. Adam? Yes, I would. Absolutely. So the next up is the Amazing Spider-Man series, uh, the two movies, Amazing Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man 2. Um Starring Andrew Garfield and uh, Emma Stone. And then you had, I thought she made a wonderful May Parker, um, who was Sally Field. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Agreed. 
I th- yeah, I thought she was great in that role. Um, uh, the amazing sp- in in well both in both movies. Uh, I thought Andrew Garfield made a really really fantastic uh, Peter Parker and Spider Man. Uh, Emma Stone is um, amazing in everything she does. I love her. Um, and then of course Martin Sheen as Uncle Ben. You know, at first I was a little I was a little put off by that. I was like Martin Sheen really. But man, he did really good as Uncle Ben. He didn't do too bad. He did pretty good. Yeah. So, um, I, and then you had. Uh, okay, go ahead. I was just going to say, this was my daughter's introduction to Spider-Man in the theaters. It was Amazing Spider-Man mm. one. Uh, so that was. It was fun to go watch that with her. I mean, what what, what yeah. year did you say that came out? Two thousand nine. Uh. 2012. Oh, wow. Man. It, that was one of my biggest criticisms about comic book movies was because we only had... Well, this is funny because we're talking Spider-Man Homecoming now. Uh, but... Right. Uh, you know, back then, I was like, what property reboots itself... Within less than ten years of the last one coming out, I was like, "Sir, why is why right. are why can't we get stuff right?" And that was, you know, Amazing Spider-Man one, two, or, or excuse me, Spider-Man one and two. Spider-Man one came out in two thousand one, two thousand two, somewhere around there. Two, and then mm-hmm. two thousand two, and then ten years later, we're doing Amazing Spider-Man, and that was to me, Correct. I felt. That was unheard of. Rebooting a property, a movie franchise within ten years. Then, 2012. It's 2017. We have a completely brand new Spider-Man franchise on our hands. Um, <laughs> what? So it's been rebooted three times. Well, I, I say rebooted. I mean, are we going to count Spider-Man, the original Spider-Man, uh, as a reboot? I, I, I would assume nah. not. No, okay. It, uh, because you know it was it was one of the it was you, you name me another huge Spider-Man movie. Yeah, it's been rebooted twice in fifteen years. A right. franchise has been rebooted twice in fifteen years. Um, I I was like, well, you know, hey, let's let so a, a new generation maybe check it out instead of the same generation dealing with a reboot. And give us some time, do something with it. I I, I just couldn't believe it. But uh, yeah. you know, continue, continue, Ronnie. We're we're talking Amazing Spider-Man one. Amazing and Spider-Man were, one. I, I, mean, I, I thought it was yeah. We're going straight into Amazing Spider-Man two. Uh, uh, of course, we had Amazing Spider-Man one. We had uh, the Lizard, uh, Kurt Connors. He did a great job. I think um, um, as far as as, as far as villains go, it was that was kind of a huh, uh, uh, an interesting choice to go with the, 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 first the lizard time, the first time around. It was the first uh-huh. time I really ever criticized a movie because of special effects and CGI. I didn't like the lizard. Yeah. I did not like it no, at all because it was complete CGI character. I didn't like it. Right. I get that. I really do. Um, but you've got... There's only so much they can do. <laughs> yeah, I know, dude. But I mean, if he, you would have showed me that movie... Motion, some of it was motion capture, though. A lot of it was motion it, capture. If you would have showed me that movie back in 2002, <laughs> clearly I would have been like, yeah. oh my gosh, you know. And, and we had the iconic yeah. we had the iconic moments that happened in Pete's life. You know, at, up to that point, mm-hmm. I don't even think... Uh, wh- uh, what's her name? Drew. <laughs> Drew. Drew Carey. <laughs> What's that? What? Complete. <laughs> what was Spider Man's uh, Emma Stone? What, who'd she play? Help me out. Why do I can't? Why can't I remember the name of that character? Gwen Stacy. Gwen Stacy, not Drew, not Drew Stacy. <laughs> Drew Gwen Carey. Stacey. That's Drew Stacy. <laughs> Peter Parker and Gwen Drew Carey. Oh, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I think that was the first time she'd appeared in the movies, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway. It, they had some good moments in there. I just couldn't. And then when Drew Carey showed up, I was like, okay, I'm out of here. Come oh, on, yeah. Kira. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Cleveland Rock. <laughs> Cleveland Rock, let's go home. Um, I, I 
I think um, I think having Dennis Leary as Captain Stacy in that was great. I thought he did a great job. Uh, but I'm a yeah. Dennis Leary fan. Um, go on to Sp- Amazing Spider-Man 2. Of course, we have Electro. I'm not a big fan of Jamie Foxx being Electro, or it wasn't until I saw the movie. Still I have like, not okay, watched works. that movie. I have not watched uh, that movie. What, why? I mean, it's just because you haven't gotten around to it, or are you boycotting it? I have it. I actually have uh-huh. a copy of it, but <laughs> I've, it's not because I'm boycotting and taking a stand. I was just like, I'm... I, I'm not interested. I don't know why I wasn't interested mm-hmm. in that one. I think I caught a little bit of it because we got it from the red box. And I, 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 for some reason, I couldn't watch it, but the kids were watching it. So I've caught bits and pieces, but I've never sat down and fully gave it a good, a good viewing. Um, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Uh, I would hope so, at least. Um, okay. Um, it, it, it's, or at least, going, okay, you know, let's see what people see in this. Um, I, I think it was unnecessarily bashed by uh, um, critics and, and and people alike. I thought it was really good. Um, I thought I, I thought it you know it, it was definitely better than Spider Man Three. I mean, let's put it that it, way. Definitely out of the five movies that. we've talked so far, was it number four? No, I'd say let's see. I would out of the five movies we've talked so far, I would put. Amazing Spider-Man at number one. Really? I would put um, yeah, I'd put Spider-Man at number two, or no, I'd put Spider-Man two at number two. Spider-Man at number three, uh, a tie for a tie for three with uh, Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man two. Okay. Um, and then and then number um, five, a distant number five. Well, I don't. Even, I think <laughs> Spider-Man are we three. We talk about four movies. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but um, a lot of people. I mean, I get why they can't use Andrew Garfield. I thought he was a great Peter Parker. I really did. I thought he he captured that that whole. Um, but he, he might have been a little too cool, you know, uh, to be Peter Parker. Or, or, but I get why they can't use him because he's you know he's thirty years old. So I mean, no, he's only yeah. getting older. So he can't be yeah. he can't be the young you know Spider Man that they want. Um, so we come into 2017, uh, but before that, we are introduced to a new Spider Man in Captain America: Civil War. Tom Holland is playing a new Spider Man that we see briefly in Captain America: Civil War, um, and then uh, you know he. Tom, uh, uh, Tony Stark yells, uh, "Underoos, calls for him. Underoos, he back out. He takes, he takes, yeah, he takes Cap's shield, and then they all fight. And then is, is we are introduced to Spider-Man: Homecoming, which I think is a brilliant title that they they played into the movie. Brilliant title because for for the longest time, Sony has had the rights, the movie rights, to Spider-Man. So." Um, Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3, and The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2 uh, were all Sony fi- pictures. While Space- Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2 I thought were great, or you know, were, were really good. We'll say it was really good. Uh, Spider-Man 1 was good. Spider-Man 2 uh, had some really great points in it, and it was a good film. Spider-Man 3 um, is complete and utter poop. Um, Sony has largely <laughs> failed. Sony has largely failed at making a Spider-Man movie. So everybody is saying, please, Sony, do something. Give the rights over or partner with uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you know, Marvel Pictures, and let them make a Spider-Man movie, which is what they did. Um, Sony and Marvel have, you know, have kind of teamed up in this movie, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and they have introduced Spider-Man into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, because in Spider-Man Homecoming, you see references to every, to Civil War. You see references to uh, the Chitauri attacking in the first Avengers movie. Um, you uh-huh. see all this stuff that's going on. And so you are fully immersed into the Marvel Universe in this movie. And while it being still a Sony movie, Marvel says no. 
okay, it's your car, but let us drive it. And they drove that car the best that's ever been driven in its entire creation with Mar- with Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah. So Spider-Man Homecoming introduces to a brand new 15-year-old Peter Parker who Tony Stark has taken under his wing because, of course, Peter Parker is brilliant, is a genius. Uh, Tony Stark finds him, knows that he has the spider powers, that he's fighting crime on his off time. Um, and he gives him a brand new suit, uh, which has something called the training wheels protocol in it, which only allows him to do so much with the suit. Uh, he has a best friend named Ned, who is, uh, who is absolutely, I think he's hilarious in this movie. Um, he's going through the same Parker stuff that he's going through. Um, they've changed some of the uh, they changed some of the, the characters from the comic books uh, into you know they've just came, changed the characterization you know um, of some of them. Flash is now uh, I think he's uh, he's he's not the stereotypical jock bully. He is also intelligent and but he's still a bully and he still picks on Peter Parker by calling him Penis Parker. Um, so, yeah, exactly. Um, and we also have, uh, you know, I think we're, we're introduced to Liz Allen. We're introduced to Betty Brant. Uh, we have all these people in the sign in this, I, I can't remember what the school is called, but it's more of a, you know, a science and technology high school than it is in, you know, uh, it's where all the, the nerds go to high school, you know, all the really super smart kids. Now there's a lot of Easter eggs that you might have missed in, in the in in the background of the school because you see uh, and I can't remember his name because it's it's German but you see the first doctor uh, that the, the the doctor uh, that created the super soldier serum uh, for Tony for uh, for Captain America and you see Tony Stark's dad you see pictures of him in the background of the school uh, you know like on a mosaic. Um, in Peter Parker's classroom, you see all these great scientists. The pictures above the the chalkboard and you know above the blackboard in the back, and you go through all these scientists of, of all this time. You know, you see uh, um, you, you know Newton and um, uh, Ronnie M. Stupid because he can't remember scientists. Um, <laughs> who's the Who's the dude with the crazy hair? Einstein. Um, Einstein, good God! So you see Einstein, you see all these pictures of all these scientists, and then at the end, very end, uh, Drew Carey, the, the, it's called Drew Carey disease. Drew Carey. Um, <laughs> at the very end of these pictures, you see a picture of Dr. Bruce Banner. No. Oh. So uh, all these great scientists, you know. So of course you see Tony Stark, uh, and in his Iron Man suit, and he's helping uh, guide our young Peter Parker through his new found hero status. And the whole time Peter Parker thinks he's, you know, being uh you know, trained to join the Avengers. Uh he is happy uh happy is, you know, uh Tony Stark's uh driver slash bodyguard. Uh he is the thorn and happy side, uh, because he keeps calling happy saying, Hey, when am I going to join the Avengers? Hey, when are yeah, what are we doing? I, you know, when's the next mission? Blah blah blah. blah. Um, so, we have Spider-Man: Homecoming. Um, Spider-Man: Homecoming. I, you know, they finally let Spider-Man come home to the Marvel Universe. So it's Homecoming. There's also a Homecoming dance in it. They can say all they want about, oh no, it's referencing that. No, it's referencing Spider-Man coming home and being and being able to be a part of the Marvel Universe again in in the, in, in the movies, which I think is brilliant. Um, but you have Tom Holland as Peter Parker. Tom Holland is smart, funny, the right age. He looks like he's 15, even though he's probably like, I think he's like 20, 1920. Um, and he is an excellent, excellent Peter Parker, an excellent Spider-Man. Um, it doesn't hurt that he's shown up recently at children's hospitals wearing the Spider-Man suit and taking selfies with kids and taking his mask off. Say, hey, I'm Peter, you know, hey, I'm Spider-Man. Hey, I'm Peter Parker. And, you know, so he kind of has fully immersed himself into this role. Um, Just like uh, Chris Evans has done with Captain America, he's done the same thing. And um, uh, Chris Pratt has done with Star-Lord. So I think he's, he's doing very well with that. 
Um, so I think they've made a, a good choice in, in in the reboot, even though it's it's a very 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 early reboot. Um, he's young enough, he's good enough, and uh, he he really gets the role. Um, we also have a new May Parker. Coming up. Our new May Parker is incredibly hot. <laughs> And it's if just you not think right. so. It's Marissa, right? Marissa Tomei? It's Marissa Tomei. Oh, Marissa gosh. Tomei. Oh. <laughs> she's 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 so hot. And <laughs> and Tony Stark she's is, 52 is, is always and amazing. She is, she's gorgeous and Tony Stark is always talking about her and hitting on her and flirting with her and I think it's hysterical. <laughs> uh it's 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 a little different from the comic books, but it, it, it works. Um, the only thing that I've ever had a problem with is is uh, the girl that is the rebel throughout the movie that's always, you know, kind of picking on Parker and his, his best friend Ned and saying, you know, she doesn't really care, it doesn't matter, you know, flipping him off, doing whatever, and her name is Michelle. But at the end of the movie, she says, and she's got dark hair, and she's kind of like she doesn't care, um, you know, she's kind of tomboyish, and at the end of the movie, they just say, "Well, you know," uh, she goes, "My name is Michelle, but all my friends call me MJ." Uh-huh. And at that point, I was really enjoying the whole movie, and then inside my my heart died a little when she said that, and I went, "Because <laughs> I I don't want her to be Mary Jane. I don't want her to be MJ." Well, here's I'm the sorry. thing. It's okay, MJ stands for Mary Jane. Everybody's calling her Michelle. Right, I, right. I, I was confused. I was like, because this isn't a spoiler, ladies and gentlemen, because if you are on the internet, you knew who the new Mary Jane was going to be. Uh, and throughout right. the whole movie, the good thing is, the positive thing is, is that they did not, she was not a significant part of this movie. I remember, uh, you know, as no. I was watching it, I was like, I was like, I thought she would be all over this movie. <clears throat> that is not the case. Uh, so it's it it's funny how they kind of try and I, I don't understand how Michelle figures into it because I I don't know if well, that's her middle name or or they're just trying to be goofy and and say no it's not Mary Jane it's Michelle Jane that no I don't think so. Um, right. Go ahead. It, it just seems too it seems too forced and too tacked on. Just like in the Dark Knight Rises, when they were like, "Oh, you should go by your your, your actual name." Uh, what is it, Robin? Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of cheesy. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't even. Uh, so, hey, I mean, that's just, one of the yeah. one one of the more pleasant things that we can absolutely tell our listeners. Is that uh-huh. you don't you don't get another origin story, ladies and gentlemen? No, you don't. I was actually going to hit on that. <laughs> you don't you do get not. an origin story. You get thrown right in the fray. He is Spider Man. He has his suit. He is flipping and flopping and flying through the city uh, on his webs, and he doesn't he's have to learn to, to all over the place. He's dusty roads. He's flipping and flopping and flying. <laughs> And he doesn't have to learn to swing on his webs. He doesn't have to learn that he can climb walls. He just does it. In fact, he breaks up a robbery, a bank robbery, um, and he jumps in there, and he just goes to work on these guys. And he's he's throwing out quips and jokes, and he's you know he's webbing people's faces to, to walls and hands to walls, and, and it's funny and it's a lot of action. And you don't have to go through the whole uh, awkward phase of a, of an origin story. This is just right in there. In your face, he is Spider-Man. Now, there's a lot of other Easter eggs we can talk about as well that you have to, you know, if you haven't seen the movie, we're not giving anything away. You know that the villain is Vulture. But what you don't know is that if you keep an eye out, you'll also see Shocker, uh, which is a Spider-Man villain. You'll see the Tinkerer, which is a Spider-Man villain. Uh, you will see the Prowler, which is a Spider-Man villain slash hero. Uh, and uh, it's not the Prowler, it's not Hobie Brown, the one we're used to. It is the Ultimate Prowler, uh, Ultimate Universe Prowler. Um, oh. And uh, you kind of get a Miles Morales uh, uh, shout-out in there. 
You get a shout out to the Scorpion. Um, so they've got all these different villains that they can play with in the future. That you don't have to go back to Doctor Octopus. You don't have to go back to the Green Goblin. You don't have to go back to all this. You've got so many more people that you can play around with in this that it, it can set up six movies if you wanted to. So um, if you if you're watching it. There is a young man who tries to buy weapons off of the Vulture's men. And uh, he's uh, Spider-Man tracks him down. He tries to intimidate him. He webs his hand to the trunk of the car. And the guy says, hey, I need to know, you know, he, Spider-Man, I need to know who you're buying uh, guns from. And the guy's like, you don't really, you haven't really done an interrogation before, have you? You're not intimidating in the least. And uh, so... You know, it's a, it's a funny little scene where Spider-Man says, hey, listen, I'm just trying to help people. I'm trying to keep people from getting killed. Can you help me out? And he helps him out. And he goes, yo, I've got a nephew that lives here, you know, a couple of blocks from here. I want to watch out for him, too. So in the Ultimate Universe where Miles Morales started as Spider-Man, Miles Morales' uh, uncle was the Prowler. Um, and so... That's uh, if you look at the guy's name, it, uh, everything matches up. So you get a little Miles Morales shout out along with the Prowler in that. Nice, because um, you don't play, you don't play, you don't pay Donald Glover just to do like a thirty second scene with, you know, he's going to be, <laughs> he's going to come out, and he's going to be, be the Prowler at some point. Yeah, he's going to be important. <laughs> so um, you also get to see a little Captain America with his little PSAs he does in the school, uh, which is really funny. So the, it's got all the elements in there, and, it's, and it comes together, and it does very well. I don't want to give anything away about the storyline. They do change some things from the comics and the cartoons, uh, and, and definitely they've left the other movies in the dust. Um, but Spider-Man Homecoming, if you're a Spider-Man fan, there is, there is tragic parts. Uh, there are hilarious parts. There's so much action. You do get a little Tony Stark for all you, you know, you, uh, you RDJ fans out there. Uh, he's not, but for all you people that are not RDJ fans or, or you know, want to see Spider-Man stand on his own, you do get to see Spider-Man stand on his own. Robert Downey Jr. doesn't steal the show. He doesn't, he's not, it's not an Iron Man movie where Spider-Man shows up in, like, like Batman versus Superman was. This is a Spider-Man movie, and he just happens to be a supporting character in it. Uh, you get a hot Aunt May, um, and you get all these elements that it comes together, and they do so well with it. And um, I, I, it, it is, you know, to round out our Spider-Man show, it is a fantastic, fantastic new Spider-Man movie. Um, is it a little too soon to re- to be a reboot? I don't. I. It's so different from the others, Jesse. I hear you, man. I, 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 mean, I listen. I, get what listen. You're saying. I really do, but it's so different. I, I, the only the only thing I'm criticizing is the fact that we have to do a reboot, <laughs> that we have to. I'm not saying that it's unnecessary because right. I think honestly <laughs> there is a good argument as to why it is necessary. Number one, so we can fold Spider-Man into the Marvel universe in some way. Oh my goodness, did we need that? Wow, did we yeah. do that? So uh, I don't, I, I certainly don't, you know, hold any grudge against the fact that they did this. Uh, I, I think it's warranted. It's just, it's, it's sad we didn't get it right the first time, you know, or sad we we didn't oh, try again, you know. There, there's, it seems like there's so much that was left from the amazing Spider-Man movie universe that just was unfulfilled. If I remember correctly, there's like an after credit scene. And, an Amazing Spider-Man one yeah. that I don't know if it I don't know if it gets resolved or even is alluded to in in part two, but that's never you know, going to be that's never going to be done <laughs> if that's the case. Um, yeah, because in part two, um, uh, Harry Osborn is becoming a goblin esque creature. Okay. All right. Don't think so. Thanks, Marvel. I appreciate it. I, I, I <laughs> that wasn't Marvel. <laughs> That was no, funny. no, I, I appreciate I appreciate Marvel taking over here and getting the, okay. the getting Spider Man right now, uh, so right. So there are okay. 
So you think of Green Goblin, you think of Doc Ock, you think of all these people. They're now larger than life because of these movies, because of the characters or the comic book characters, because of uh, you know they're the ones that are the go to guys in the in the in the video games, the cartoons, the movies, and everything. But when you get down to it, nobody really thought of the Vulture. The Vulture is and Michael yeah. Keaton is brilliant in this role. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, you also see that why he became a villain was because of. Uh, a, a brand new uh, a team has been introduced in Spider-Man: Homecoming um, uh, to the Marvel Universe, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and that is Damage Control, which I think is fantastic. These yeah. are just the guys that come along and clean up everything when the when when the <laughs> when the superheroes uh, trash New York, they come and they fix it. So Damage Control is is introduced in this, um, and then you know Michael Keaton is brilliant. But look at all the characters. Like I said, um, you know, okay, the three guys that you that you know, Ox Montana and um, something Dan. I can't remember his name. You got the, you had the big dude was Ox, and you had Montana who had the whip, and then you had uh, something Dan with the guns, and they, they fought the against, Lieutenant uh, Dan, Spider Man. Not <laughs> Lieutenant Dan. He had the guns. Uh, he just didn't have the legs. <laughs> right, which rendered him. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan, you don't have no legs. Oh Lord, it is getting late. But uh, but so I got you, the guns, you see Montana. Baby. <laughs> Montana is in there. So you got so many guys that are more street level to to uh, to contend with. So I think it's I think that's fantastic. I think that they've done an excellent job at setting up uh, Spider-Man, you know, Homecoming to have a sequel and to have a bigger role in the Marvel Universe, uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, because he is in Avengers Infinity War. Oh, boy. So, uh, Jesse, do you have any final thoughts on our Spider-Man uh, potpourri grab bag discussion tonight? No, nah, man, you know, it's, again, I cannot... I love the age that we live in where nerds are taking over the world. It's the greatest thing to ever see. And it's Peter so Parker, true. Peter Parker is, I think at least a, a, a tidbit of the Genesis of that. So absolutely. If anybody listening to this podcast leaves with one thing. I, I believe that you need an understanding of this character's creation taking place 50 years ago and going through all the changes that it has throughout the years has cemented itself in the zeitgeist. I'll use a word. I'll use a word called zeitgeist. I I, I really don't understand totally what it means, so correct me if I'm wrong. I was going to say, do you know what it means? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But, yeah, no, I I, I think it's... No one's going to call me out because they don't know either. Um, it, it cemented it's so themselves in the zeitgeist of popular culture, and it has it it's done nothing but assist in the fact that the little guy, the small guy, it's it, Spider-Man has probably influenced some of the greatest minds of this earth, just because of the the trials, the tribulations, and the power and the responsibility that this man has had throughout his fictional career. Um, okay. Now, other than that, that's, that's it. I'm done. I turn it over to Adam. I'm just glad that we got a good uh, Spider-Man movie. I've yet to see it, but we're cool. Yeah. You <laughs> no, but, but You'll like, like it, dude. It, it's um, pretty good. Well, I'm really excited about this one because, like you guys were mentioning, Marvel took over, and I, it's like, it's one of those things. I just, I just, it, it's such an obvious uh, solution for, for the, for the. Uh, I, I'm, I've never really been, been a huge fan of the, uh, of the Spider-Man movies. To be honest, I saw the first like two, and then after that, I was like, I was like, these aren't like the Spider-Man that I remember, and I don't want to taint my view of Spider-Man by watching. Uh, you know, suboptimal movies. So I, I I just never saw them, you know. But this one I, I'm really excited for because Marvel took over. And I, and all I can say is it's about freaking time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's all I can sit here and say. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and and uh, it's you know it's playing down here at the theaters, and I've I've contemplated taking my my three and five year old, but then I think yeah, it's PG thirteen. I can't I can't justify taking a three year old to to see Spider Man. So I'll probably just wait for it to come out on uh, because you're not trying hard enough. Let's see. I know. Well, I I can justify it, but. I don't think my wife feels the let same. Me, let, me, <laughs> let me just say that trying, justifying whatever, you're not going to walk out of that theater with a fun experience. <laughs> not taking the <laughs> Yeah, kids, I know. Especially a three-year-old to, to – oh, dude, that's rough. That, that, that's a, yeah, that's well, a tough thing to do. Well, I, I wanted to see it, and honestly, it was like, okay, because we, we took him to see a movie a couple of weeks ago, and we ended up seeing Despicable Me 3, which is hilarious, by the way. And uh, I wanted to see Spider-Man Homecoming, but I was like, man, I just, I can't do it. Like, I don't know if there was just, it was like the nerd in me was just like, yeah, let's go watch Spider-Man. But the dad <laughs> in me was like, oh, come on, dude. Really? I'm going to make fun of you the whole time, and I'm going to criticize you for taking your three-year-old to a PG-13 movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but you know, back to the back to the movie thing. It's like I'm just glad that we finally got a movie that does justice to uh, to Spider Man. Although I will say, he looked rather young in this movie, like a lot younger than uh, Peter Parker. Oh yeah, they just keep getting younger. Dude. And, yeah, it's like it's like well, a, Peter Parker was only going to have Spider. He... You're going to have Spider Baby. You know, <laughs> oh, you're going to have this this toddler. You know, flying through the air with. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's late. So, but, Peter Parker was only but, about yeah, 16, like, 17 when he uh, when he got his powers. Right. Anyway, uh, right. And that's what I was going to mention was I did I did some some I just went back and did some research because I just started reading the um, like the comics uh, the the original comics um, you mentioned earlier, oh, Ronnie, where where, uh, where where yeah yeah where. Um, uh, Aunt May married was it J. Jonah Jameson's dad? Is that who it was? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's what I, I, that's what I thought. But I just started reading that one literally like like two days ago. Like I, I had it downloaded, but I just started reading it. You know, so I was just like, man, so much stuff that I don't know about Spider Man. You know, I, I know the I know the basic stuff. You know, but I was like, I want to I want to look at the uh, what I call the extended universe, but really it's just like the Spider Man universe, Marvel universe, whatever. But but yeah, I'm really excited to see this movie. I'm it's it's one of those high up on my list of things to see for as soon as I can. You know. Good deal. All right. Well, I've seen it. I love it. I think everybody should see it um and give it a shot. Uh there's only I like I could literally only point out one thing that I didn't like in it. Um it's a good thing you didn't take your kids because the vulture would scare the crap out of him. I know they would, because uh, he's he can be pretty terrifying at times. Um, no, you're but, staying. You're staying here. We're not leaving. <laughs> stop crying. <laughs> stop crying. Um, but Spider Man, Spider Man could possibly be one of the greatest superheroes of all time, spanning across every every comic you know every comic company, every movie. Anything you can think of, you know, when when people think about superheroes, they think Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, you know, people like that. So Spider-Man is definitely up there in the big names, uh, rightfully so. Um, why Spider-Man? Because he's Spider-Man. And everything about him is just right. Everything about him screams superhero, screams hero. Um, with that, I'm going to say for Jesse Starcher, for Adam. No, wait a minute. I'm going to make Jesse plug some stuff. No, no. <laughs> Jesse, plug some stuff. Hey, plugs, plugs, plugs. Well, ladies and gentlemen, first, I want to invite you to go give the Rattlich in Broadcasting Network a the Facebook page. Give go find that. Give it a like. Uh, just go into Google search in, uh, just type in Rattlich and then type in podcast. You want to bring up just about darn near everything that we're on. We're on iTunes. We're on Stitcher. We're on TuneIn Radio. 
We're on Spreaker.com. Uh, and uh, th- th- there's another one, too. I can't remember what it is. I always forget it. Th- uh, like, my mind stops tune at four. In. But tune in, radio. That's right. Tune in, radio. <laughs> you can check that out. We're, we're on there somewhere. Um, I do a podcast called Source Material right here on the network. We go back. We take a look at some great comic book stories that's happened in the past. We're up to over 120 episodes, and... If you haven't already and you're interested, listen. The Flashpoint episode that we did, Ronnie Adams, through the roof. It's unbelievable. It went straight That's to the awesome. top. It's, it's the most listened to podcast that I've had the opportunity to have. And I even think we beat out 411 Ground and Pound that week. I don't know what, what was going on. Yeah, dude. I can't believe it. I, I mean, I don't know how we pulled that off. But we did. So and I'm a happy. Whole seven listens. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm happy we did it I'm happy we did it uh, But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to check that out Like I said, just go to blogtalkradio.com You can type in Radlich and look at the whole archive there We're over at 120 episodes for source material And we have all sorts of stuff on here We got wrestling, uh, lots of wrestling Thanks to our buddies over at W2M not, W2Mnet.com uh, they are supplying us with a lot of wrestling content here lately. Uh, movie reviews as the summer of blockbusters roll on. Damn you, Hollywood will take you on a ride uh, and let you know how those films have been faring. So check that out. Um, on trial, I assume we'll come back at some point. And, of course, uh, Metal Hammer of Doom, which I plugged there earlier to, on the podcast. That's all I can think of. If you'd like to follow me, you can do so at Stiznarkey on Twitter. Uh, Source Material has a Twitter as well. It's at Source Matt Cast, and we also have a YouTube. We've got all sorts of social medias, uh, just all out there. But you can check out <laughs> the YouTube stuff there. All the That's media. a lot of fun. All the medias. The YouTube stuff's fun because we can share visuals of the comic book uh, pages that mm. we're talking about. So I, I, I enjoy doing that. Uh, and Ronnie's been on there. Adam, you showed up. A, I think one time you you made that you made your appearance on source material when we were having a live episode, if I remember correctly. Uh, so anyway, yes, look forward to it was it was when it, look forward to the last plug. I swear, probably this week, mm-hmm. Craven's Last Hunt should drop on the network. I've I've had it in the can forever and a day. I just haven't had the opportunity to put it on the network, and I'd like to get it on here for Spider Man Week since we missed the episode this past Monday. Uh, man, I'll tell you right, right now, there is powerful stories in comic books. I'll, 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 use, I'll use correct grammar here. There are powerful stories in comic books, and uh, <laughs> Craven's Last Hunt is absolutely one of them. Um, the, the topics that we discuss on there, albeit it's, it's primarily around the story of Peter trying to get back to his wife and deal with what's ha- what Craven has done to him. The, the the situation and the change that Craven has gone through throughout this book is pretty heavy-handed. So watch for that to drop. It's going to be a lot of fun, uh, and, and it's going to be some interesting discussion between me and Benjamin J. Cologne. And shout-out again to our boys at the Kapow, the Pop Culture Podcast, for coming on the Absolutely. show tonight. Yeah, go check their Facebook page out. They just dropped an episode, I think, earlier today, and I, I can't wait to listen. They they have a they have a lot of good content they put on there. I've guessed it over there on their show a couple times. They're just right down the road at Asylum Comics on Third Street in Marietta, Ohio. Adam Runyon, you gonna plug some stuff, Adam Runyon? <laughs> I tell you what, I'm not, as, I'm not a good, as good of a, a hype man as, as you are, man. But let me just tell you, if I had a band, you would totally be our MC. <laughs> you know, I had to come out to introduce this man. I'm telling you, you're almost that. as good as. Uh, you're almost he is a whirling dervish uh, of hype. He, I'll do <laughs> yes, it. He is. You're almost as good as um uh oh gosh, who's the guy that that hung out with like Run DMC and all them? Uh, he had, uh Flava Flav 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 Oh my god. He was yeah, a part of Flav public Flav. enemy, you uncultured Phil's thing. Flav Flav. Uh, Flav. <laughs> sorry, sorry, uh, I got a little out of hand. I'm, I'm just I'm just saying. I get him I get him all messed <laughs> up. But but anyway, if you're looking, I'm I'm just start I just started my vacation today, so you'll see some nice. some funny stuff come come your way. So if you're looking for me, you're you're really interested. You can find me on Twitter at Adam is a nerd. 
Very nice. All right. Um, you can find the show on Facebook. Uh, just look up Screaming Boy Podcast. Twitter at Screaming Boy PR. Instagram Screaming Boy Podcast. Um, we have. Uh, we've got some stuff. Uh, we've we've done mostly just live shows here lately on the Radlich and Broadcast Network. Big shout out to Mark Radlich for letting us do that. Thank you so much. I do believe I have a way of recording once again. So we will be back to YouTube, to uh, iTunes, and uh, to Stitcher, and wherever tune in, wherever else we are, uh, very very soon, very soon. So. Um, I am no longer, uh, I think, hopefully, Sans' computer. And no, Teasley Sans is not a person. So, uh, with that, I'm going to say, <laughs> for the whirling dervish of hype, Jesse Starcher, street-level starch, for Adam, I don't have a cool nickname for you right now, I'm so sorry. Nobody has a cool nickname for me, so maybe you can come up with one. Come to me. He is the Chewbacca de Mahon Solo. He is Adam Runyon. <laughs> I am Ronnie Adams. Have a beautiful evening. We're out. Once upon a time, there was a new crossover that refused to play by the rules. It flipped the script and made all the others look like fools. Featuring styling that's sexier by far and handles like a rock star. Introducing the first ever Toyota CHR. Enjoy agile handling in the body of a seductive crossover that comes with standard 18-inch alloy wheels. The first ever Toyota CHR. The perfect ride to spin your own tail. Toyota. Let's go places. What's the big rush? It's Black Friday in July at Macy's. Wait, isn't Black Friday in... Right, but right now, prices are so low, it's like Black Friday. In July. Exactly. And we get an extra 25 or 15% off with our Macy's card or savings pass. Gotta tell you, these specials are incredible. And we get free shipping online. With any $49 purchase. Okay, what's wrong? Um, should we have had a big turkey dinner yesterday? It's Black Friday in July, now at Macy's. Exclusions apply, savings off sale prices.